Everybody's wrong. Rewrote the song. Thoughts become action. Tell me what's happening. Wish your mind wrapped in a wrapped around. Hey guys, so this video is going to be sort of a follow up to the interlaced lettering tutorial which I did previously and I'm going to be showing you how to create the sort of same kind of tube lettering but with a more realistic feel to it so using materials within Cinema 4D. But quickly before I get into the actual video I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone that's supported this channel over the years and all you people who have just subscribed recently, huge thank you to everybody. I mean, I've just reached 100,000 subscribers, which is just ridiculous. Like, I honestly never thought I'd even reach 1,000. So to reach 100,000 is just ridiculous. I'm excited to see what happens from here and see where the channel actually goes from here as well. So thanks again, everyone, for subscribing and supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. And let's get into the video. Okay, so first you're obviously going to need a piece of type to work with and I'm just using this piece of type that says Desire, which was from one of my university projects. And basically what you need to have is a piece of type that's made out of strokes. So as you can see, if I click on this down in the bottom corner here, this is a stroke and it's not a fill. The only thing that are, that are a fill is the two points here, but those will be replaced by spheres when we get into Cinema 4D. So, once you've got your type and you've made sure everything's nice and smooth like this, all you're going to do is come up to File, Save, but I've already saved this so I'll just go to Save As for now. And I'm just going to make a new folder on the desktop. And we'll just call it Desire Cinema 4D. So, And when you get to this part, you, where it says Version, you want to make sure you click on Version 8. I'm not sure why, but Version 8 seems to be the only version that's compatible with Cinema 4D. So I'm just going to hit OK on that. And then we're going to come over to Cinema 4D. I'm going to drag in the file that we've just saved, which will be in here. So I'm basically just going to click the Cinema 4 Desire Cinema 4D.ai and just drag this into Cinema 4D. Make sure all that make sure connect splines is ticked and just hit OK. And now you can see that this is here, and you can now see it's like a little wireframe, and that's because it's that's because we used a stroke. So what we're going to do now is first of all we're going to expand this. Click on all these and I'm going to drag these out and I'm going to delete the folder at the top and I'm just going to name all of these as well so that's the letter D right and these two are the dots but we're going to be deleting those uh, later on anyway but we'll keep them there so we know where to put the spheres for now so what we're going to do from here is you're going to come up to this top part here with this little green like ball thing in a, in a wireframe box just hold that down then where it says subdivision surface hit that and then you're going to go on it again and then you're going to go down to sweep, select that and then where it's got this little pen tool symbol here, you're going to click on that and then you're going to go over to circle. So what you're then going to do is you're going to select the sweep here and you're going to drag it down onto the subdivision surface but you want to make sure the arrow is pointing down and not to the side like this. So it needs to be pointing down, not to the side and that, that puts it inside it. So what you're then going to do is same with the circle but do it to the sweep. So make sure the arrow's down and that will put it inside. So we're first going to just put in one letter and then we're going to take it out and then duplicate the uh, other three things because it just makes it faster. So we're just going to put this in and when you put the letter, when you put one of the letters into um, the into the sweep, you want to make sure you put it where it's, the arrow is pointing to the left and not pointing down. So like this. And now you can see it um, put this onto the letter D and it's a big mess at the minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on to where it says circle and click onto that and then come over to object down here and it says radius it's by default at 2000 millimeters so we're just going to change this to 400 and hit enter and you can see straight away that looks much better than it just did so what we're next going to do is go up to sweep and then where it says cap you're going to make sure these are both on fillet cap like so and where it says steps we're going to bump that up to 100 on both of them just to make sure that it's nice and rounded and you want to make sure that this is definitely ticked where it says constrain this needs to be ticked otherwise you will not get the like perfectly rounded edges on them and sorry um, and then where it says radius we're going to bump this up to about 420 because this is where it gets, gives you a nice rounded edge like this that's what i found to work with this size so let's do the same with that one 420 and now as you can see we've got this sort of part here where it intersects and doesn't look particularly great and this is where the Cinema 4D part comes into it because now you're, not, now you're not working on a 2D surface, now you're working in 3D. So you can actually move points backwards. So this, this line that comes up here, to fix this problem, we're going to move this behind the curved line. So we're actually going to push this back. 
And to do this, all we're going to do is, in fact, no, before we do that, sorry, we're going to take the letter D out of there, drag it back out. So now you've got um, the like these three here, and we're going to need four of these. So we're just going to copy that. We're just going to click on the subdivision surface, hit Command C, Command V, V, V. So we've got four of these now for all four of these letters, and we're just going to drag the letter D into that one with the arrow pointing to the left again. ES again with it pointing to the left. Same with oops, same with the other ones as well. So I'll just throw these two in quickly. And I'm just going to quickly rename these as well, just so it's easier to see and it's less confusing. Right now we'll start actually fixing it because obviously you can see there's a lot of errors here where it's like intercepting each other and you you don't really want it like that. So what we're going to do is you're going to come up to the first letter. So we'll work with the D and where it says basic down here when you click on the actual letter you'll see where it says x-ray down here and it's not ticked so if you if you tick that you can see it kind of goes like translucent so you can see through it so what we need to do now is move this point backwards so to do this you want to make sure you've got the actual letter selected here and you want to make sure you've got this tool selected where it's like the cube with the two circles on the edges and you also want to make sure you have this tool selected as well so now we're going to click on the point and as you can see all these um, arrows pop, like, pop up. So we're just going to drag this out to the right so it's just about out of the other part so it's not like intercepting and that looks about right and let me just zoom out and now you can see that looks miles better already so we're just going to fix this bottom part as well because it kind of goes into itself and what I've done is I've got two different points here which just makes it a little bit easier for me to actually um, adjust it and move one of them to the side because if you have just one point then it actually makes it a bit more difficult so I'm just going to drag this out when I say I've got two points I mean where that curve was at the very end there I actually added two, um, two points instead of just one so now what I can do is sort this out so if you want to adjust one point by itself all you have to do is hold down shift and then click on that so click on the point and you'll see that it only adjusts that side of it I'm just doing that so I can have it give it a nice curve and I also need to move that point so it's not overlapping oops not this one this point so I'm just gonna move this even further out so it's not overlapping the other part of the um, letter D so that'll probably be about far enough and now we just want to fix the rat fact no that's quite rounded anyway it's perfect right so just bring this out so you can see what it looks like right actually there is like a bit of a kink in it so I think what we need to do is adjust this yeah that was the issue right that looks much better now I think right so now the letter D is finished we're gonna simply do the letter E which is the same as doing the letter D all we're doing is moving the point so we're gonna click onto the ES at the top make sure it's got the x-ray mode on and then we're going to select the actual letters itself and I'm just going to select this point here and with the blue arrow I'm just going to drag it behind so it's not inter intercepting each other and again with the letter S here where that connects I'm just going to push that behind I'm actually going to nudge that down a little bit as well just so that when we're viewing it from a different angle you can't see it behind and now at the top here again I've got two different points so I'm just going to turn it and I'm just going to bring this one all the way out and I'm going to push it back so it's on line with that one so that when you view it from the front you shouldn't actually be able to see that it goes backwards it'll just look flat right let me see how that looks see so yeah, that's what I mean how you can see the, um, the other the part of the letter behind it but that's because I want an angle but now that looks quite good so let me just do a little pre-render just to see how that's looking right so as you can see it's still kind of like overlapping itself there so I still need to push it a little bit further back so I'll just go back in turn the camera angle and I'm just gonna pull this a little bit further out and to help compensate for this because as you can see it's coming back in at an angle which is why it's intercepting with this part so to sort that out all I'm gonna do is there should be another point down here which is hidden behind this so I need to um, put this one on the x-ray mode as well and then I'm just going to select back on the ES 
and this point here is one I was referring to. I'm just going to select that point and I'm going to drag that out as well. Now this will help the interception part here so it shouldn't look like it's crossing over itself now. And now we can move on to the I and R. These ones are quite uh, easy letters to work with as well so I'm just going to get this one, push it back so it kind of merges in with that I think. Let's see how that looks. And this may, I'll maybe probably put it behind it a little bit actually. And this point up here, because it's only a single point but it's got two anchor arms on it, actually makes it quite easy to um, do this part. So all you've got to do is basically turn it like that and it sort of goes in on itself but because of the angle it's at you can't actually see it do that. So that's quite cool. The letter R at the top, we're going to do the same for this like we did with the S. We're just going to bring, because there's two points again, so we're just going to get one of the points, bring it all the way out so it's uh, behind. And get this point as well, move this one out. And we need to go a little bit further so it's not touching each other. Like there, and same with this one. And because there's nothing else going on here, I'm going to let that gradually bring itself forward back to the original line. And then we'll go to the last letter E, make sure that's on X-ray mode, select the letter, and then select the point, and then we're just going to drag that behind like so. And now let's see how it looks. So I'm quite happy with that, how it looks right now. Uh, let me just see how the S and the I go together. Let me just give that a quick pre-render. Right, so I'm not I'm happy with everything else except from this sort of connection here. It doesn't look too good. So I'm just gonna adjust this. Right, that's probably what I'm so I could do really with moving the is it the I R? Yeah. I could do with moving this over here. The same goes for this one. So just gradually moving them over a little bit. But you want to make sure you keep looking at it as well from this angle so you can get a better idea of how it's actually looking because you, you do get like little kinks in it if you start um, moving them around too much. So drop that down a little bit as well so when you view it from the angle that I'm going to be rendering it from you won't be able to see it behind. That looks miles better. Right so now that that's done we're just going to add the spheres above the eye and for the full stop so we're just going to go up to the cube at the top here and where it's got a sphere and that's put it above there. For some reason it's put me below the um, floor by default. So I'm just gonna right, zoom back in. And I'm gonna select this tool here. And then when you select this tool, you'll see that you have these little orange squares on the outer side. And you can just resize it with that, which is quite convenient. So just make them a little bit smaller and align them where they should be. So about there, yep. And I'm just going to do Command C, Command V, bring that over here, drop it down, get it in the right place. And now with these two paths at the bottom, which were the, cir which were the circles, we can now select both of these and delete them because we don't need them anymore. And what I'm going to do now is go back through these and turn off the X-ray mode so they're all completely visible now. Because now you're pretty much done. All you need to do now is the scene and the actual colours on the letters. So. Um, I'm going to put these, I'll put a link to these colours in the description um, in case any of you want to use them for yours. But mine are already saved, so I'm going to go to my content browser at the right here. And I've got these here, so I'm just going to select all these, right click, open, and that'll put them all down here for me. And I've already got them named for what I'm going to use them for, so it's fairly straightforward. And then I'm going to come back up to the top here and select object, which brings you back to the project that you're working on. And now I'm going to go to this sort of floor thing here and select floor. And I'm also going to select a sky. And in fact, because this is below the floor by default, I need to actually select all of this. So I'm just going to drag and select. Make sure you've got this tool selected here so that you can actually drag the full thing. And I'm going to drag it above the floor, otherwise the floor wouldn't even be visible. So now that's above the floor, I'm going to drag the floor over here and down at the bottom here I've got the floor colour so I'll throw that on there. I've got the sky colour so I'll drag that up to the sky and ideally when you render this you don't really want, so let me just give you an example, you don't really want the background in it do you? You don't, it just doesn't look great so 
Ideally we want it without a background on it like a PNG. So what we're going to do is, when if you come up to sky at the top here, if you right click, go to Cinema 4D Tags and then come down to Compositioning, hit that and down here it says Scene by Camera and you just want to untick that. And now you want to put this on the floor as well, so you're just going to hold Command and I think it'll probably be Control on PC, just click and drag it down to the next one and that will just copy it for you. So now if you'll see if you press the pre-render that the whole background's black and it's not rendering any of the background. So from here, we're nearly done. All we're going to do now is select the gold colour down here. I mean, you, if you've got your own uh, materials, then feel free to use those. I'm just going to throw these on. And the last thing I'm going to do now is add a area light. I'm just going to drag this over, bring it back a little bit, and lift it. Maybe bring it back a little bit more. And in fact, the last thing I'm going to do is on the with the light selected, I'm going to come down to shadow, and then where it says shadow, I'm going to select shadow map soft, and I'm going to go for a very dark grey colour. So it's not this doesn't really show up that much, but it's it just gives it that extra little bit of detail, and it's definitely worth putting it in anyway. So let's just give that a quick pre-render now to give you an idea of how this looks. Bearing in mind there's no uh, render settings on it so it does look quite poor as you can see, like the quality of it. But the actual letter in itself and the overall thing does look quite nice. So what you want to do here now is go to your render settings up here at the top and if you've used Cinema 4D before um, then you'll probably have render settings that you, you normally use that are probably really good but I'm I'm probably I'm a bit of a novice with Cinema 4D so I'm just going to go with these settings for now so I'm going to go with 3000 by 1000 and if I was doing a proper like work for somebody or I was doing it for a project or something I'd probably do these dimensions a bit bigger but for the sake of this tutorial and keeping it like fairly simple and quick I'm just going to stick with that resolution uh, with the dimension, sorry, and then the, re re the resolution is going to be 300, and then I'm going to come down to save, and you're going to make sure this is on PNG, and then you want to make sure you've got alpha channel ticked, and that basically just takes the background off it for you. So go down to, oh no, so you need to select your location where you're going to save it, so let's go to here, we'll just call it desire, 3D and let's go through the settings now so multi-pass we'll just tick that anti-aliasing we'll go you have to you need to put that to best and i'm not entirely sure what these two do the um, minimum maximum so i'm not really going to touch those uh, options don't really know these again if you're more experienced with cinema 4d you'll probably have better render settings or know more like more of what to do with it but i'm just going to go to effect here and then add ambient occlusion and global illumination then X that off, let me just double check everything's right, yep, I'm happy with that. And now I'm just going to hit the middle render button here which will render it out for me and it will open up this window. So I'm just going to skip this part and then I'll be back with you as soon as it's finished rendering. So once the lettering is finished rendering, you can then throw it into Photoshop and I'm just going to do that by dragging it in, so drag the PNG in, hit enter. And the good thing about this now is because it's actually already a colour, you can just simply hit Command U or Control U if you're on PC. And you can just mess around with the hue and saturation, which actually makes it easy to work with like this. So say you wanted like a rose gold sort of colour, it's very easy to do that. And you don't have to have a metallic text uh, material, of course, you can use whatever you want within Cinema 4D. But I just used a metallic one because I thought it looked kind of cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it. From here you can... Um, do the interlaced sort of thing you know from the previous tutorial and if you've not seen that I'll have a link to that in the description down below so yeah you could use this rather than using the illustrator sort of 3d effect you could do it on here and have like a more realistic um, piece of type and then interlace it with some regular serif or sans serif fonts so yeah that's pretty much it I really hope this tutorial has helped some of you guys and I hope it's helped you learn a thing or two uh, let us know what other tutorials you'd like to see in the future and thank you so much for watching.